My name is Amata and in this Red Gamer Tech video I'm here as usual with a collection of tech news from the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today? Well we've got quite a few meaty bits to get through, but our first item is going to be regarding the HTC Vive Pro, so we've got a basically a list of differences between it and the original as well as a price reduction for the original unit. We also have some analysts on why the iPhone X is selling so poorly by Apple standards. And Microsoft are also dangling some pretty nice paychecks in front of any researchers who are able to find any flaws that are similar in nature to Spectre and Meltdown. Basically, they're trying to prevent the whole tech world from being completely bamboozled as we were previously. However, our biggest story of today is NVIDIA RTX technology for games has been announced. Now you may recall just the other day that there was a leaked slide thanks to video cards and now we have confirmation and a bunch of details on how this is going to work as well as the interesting implications of what Nvidia have to say regarding RTX. However, let's begin with HTC Pro. Now the main interesting part for this, or at least for me, is the fact that the initial unit for the HTC Vive is getting a price reduction. Now it is going to be still fairly expensive because, well, it's VR, but of course the price of the entry to VR has been probably one of the biggest issues that are stopping it from becoming truly widespread. So basically HTC have now opened pre-orders for the Vive Pro. So we have an increased resolution of 2880 by 1600 as well as built-in 3D spatial audio headphones as well as a bunch of wireless technology which basically means that you're not going to look like some sort of weird octopus with wires trailing out all over the place. Unsurprisingly, the new unit is pretty damn expensive. It's going to cost you $800 or $799 to be exact. Now obviously this does mean there's going to be a wireless adapter involved, so there may be some kinks with that, or it might not. We'll have to see how this actually works in reality. But obviously the amount of wires is a bit of a concern when using any VR headset, so it's nice to see we're moving towards wireless. Obviously, as per usual with VR, you do need a fairly beefy PC to run it, although it's getting a lot less expensive than it once was to actually have the rig to run it. The VR headset is another matter entirely. But the actual standard HTC Vive has now been reduced to $499, a $100 price cut. So, yeah, it's still a pretty penny. It's not exactly cheap as chips or anything like that. But $100 is still $100 off. I don't think it's enough to suddenly make it start flying off the shelves, but it definitely helps. And this is the sort of thing that we can expect to see as VR continues to be improved and hopefully, to be honest, the new units won't be so expensive because, again, this is going to remain enthusiast until it doesn't cost a kidney to get VR. VR is always going to be expensive, obviously, you know, gaming generally is an expensive hobby, but $800 is a bit of a big ask for a lot of people, especially when it has to be coughed up all at once. So, nice to see a small reduction in price for the original, even if it's not enough to truly bring it down to mass market level pricing. However, let's begin, sorry, let's stop, let's move on, rather, because we've already begun, our second topic, which is the iPhone X. Now, there have been numerous analysts who have been talking on the iPhone X and while, why, rather, the sales have been below the usual insanely high Apple standards. Now, the analyst team at Nomura have joined forces with various other researchers, which include Longbow Research and Bernstein, or Bernstein, not exactly sure on the pronunciation, but they have joined forces with them to basically talk about why the iPhone X hasn't been doing so great. And obviously, this doesn't take an analyst to say, the iPhone X is a tad expensive, lads, and that might have something to do with why it's not selling so great. And that's pretty much what they've said. However, they have said it in a much fancier way. And they've said, quote, one factor is that likely suppressing the smartphone market is price. We see several indications that market elasticity is falling. Obviously, Apple's iPhone ASPs have climbed from 645 in financial year 16, we model 742 in financial year 18. We do not believe it is coincidence that the highest end of the product portfolio, the X, is the model that is flagging. We thus lower our financial year 2018 iPhone units from 226 million to 221 million below consensus of 20, 224 million and our EPS from 11.6 to 11.40 and below consensus of 11.48. So basically Apple are going to slightly make slightly less than all
all the money in the world. So they're still going to make a ton of money because, well, it's Apple. But it is a fair chunk of change. Obviously, it's still you're talking about millions of dollars. Obviously, they're still you know they're not exactly not exactly crying, wiping their tears with hundred dollar bills or anything. But obviously. They, I think they've been shown that they can only push their pricing so far before people start to go, do you know what, my previous iPhone's actually still fine, why would I pay $1,000 basically for a new one that doesn't really offer that big of an upgrade? Obviously that's always been the case with Apple, at least in my opinion. They do have some upgrades and innovations, of course I'm being a little bit facetious there, but you get my point, but clearly the market's shown, hey, this might be a touch much. Again, they're still making a ton of money, but it is so interesting to see the upper limit, I guess, of what Apple's fan base will tolerate. So obviously we have to wait and see what the actual sales figures are after a reasonable amount of time. These are only predictions, of course. It could be way higher or way lower than what they've said here, but it still is interesting nonetheless. So let's move on to Microsoft. To say that Meltdown and Spectre took the tech world by surprise doesn't really feel like strong enough wording. It just seemed to come out of nowhere like an RKO and could just completely body slam the tech industry and we've all been scrambling to try and protect ourselves as much as possible. And now Microsoft are keen to kind of stop any future vulnerabilities taking us all by surprise like that again by dangling some pretty big payment awards to researchers who are able to find speculative execution execution excuse me flaws that are similar to spectrum meltdown and basically an incentive so this is a part of its bug bounty program and researchers can up earn up to rather $250,000 for the discovery of certain vulnerabilities. Now they have issued a blog post about this which will be linked in the description below this video but they have said quote speculative execution is truly a new class of vulnerabilities and we expect that research is already underway exploring new attack methods. This bounty program is intended as a way to foster that research and the coordinated disclosure of vulnerabilities related to these issues. So what is Microsoft actually interested in? Well, obviously, as I've already said, they're interested in new categories of speculative execution attacks, Azure Speculation Execution Mitigation Bypass, Windows Speculative Execution Mitigation Bypass, and of course, instance of a known speculative execution vulnerability excuse me, in Windows 10 or Microsoft Edge. The vulnerability must enable the disclosure of sensitive information across a trust boundary. So... The tier one, which is obviously the speculative execution, is worth up to 250000 and the very bottom one is worth $25,000. So, you know, the lowest one is not exactly chump change. You wouldn't exactly turn that down if Microsoft were like, hey, do you want twenty-five grand? You wouldn't exactly be like, you know what, Microsoft, I'm good. You'd be like, nah, give, if, 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 if that's cool. So, this could mean that certain vulnerabilities are discovered faster or not. But it's still interesting to see Microsoft trying to get ahead of the curve by saying, hey guys, if you find this, there's a little bit of an extra cookie in it for you. So let's move on to our final topic of the day, which I know is the one you're almost interested in, and that is NVIDIA's RTX technology being officially confirmed. As I mentioned, there was a leaked slide the other day which seemed to point towards an announcement for NVIDIA RTX technology. And now it has been announced with much fanfare at GDC 2018. Now, before I get into the really interesting part of this, I just want to discuss a little bit about what real-time ray tracing actually is. And as you'll be seeing on the screen, it looks rather impressive as it really improves the lighting and shadows in a scene. And it's basically a rendering technique based upon how we actually see the world. Obviously, as you would know, basic science, light photons bounce off objects before they hit your eyes. And obviously, simulating this in real time in a virtual space is, well, a touch ambitious to say the least. But ray tracing basically reverses it and sends a bunch of lines outwards from the camera towards the scene in front, checks the object's properties, properties excuse me, as well as the light sources around it to calculate the exact colour the pixel on your screen should be. So basically it's trying to emulate the way that light actually works. So this is looking pretty damn impressive if you ask me. The lighting in the trailer that NVIDIA have shown is really, really nice, I have to say. <clears throat> Now, real-time ray tracing is already in use in other areas outside of gaming, but understandably, it hasn't really been used inside gaming for fairly obvious reasons. There's obviously 
just more going on in your average scene in a game than there might be in, say, your real estate photos or even a film, that sort of thing. So, obviously, there's a lot more power required because obviously you've got to you know, render the game as well. But it looks like we might be seeing this come to gaming and we also might have seen an inadvertent confirmation of NVIDIA's GeForce Volta. Now, RTX requires Volta or later, kind of. Now, DXR and RTX will support older graphics cards, but the special Gameworks features will be locked to, quote, Volta and future generation GPU architectures, according to an article from Engadget. So, what's interesting, the part that kind of leans towards, hey, maybe they just inadvertently revealed GeForce Volta, is to be honest, the wording of their posts and also the fact that they're talking a lot about games here. So, a quote from their blog reads, quote, In the past we've demonstrated real-time ray tracing on many occasions, but only in basic scenes or at low frame rates. Now, as the videos above show, NVIDIA RTX and the power of Volta architecture GPUs make real-time tracing a reality in highly detailed video game scenes at playable frame rates. And through a co collaboration with Microsoft, RTX will be fully supported in applications that utilize their new DirectX ray tracing API and Volta architecture GPUs, ensuring widespread support for the new features. So they haven't actually said, yeah, it GeForce Volta is a thing and GeForce Volta is going to support this, but it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to put all this work, effort, funding and all that other stuff into something that is being so heavily touted for gaming and for Volta if there's not going to be a Volta gaming GPU. You can kind of see my logic here. Now obviously this is a far cry from an 100% confirmation, but it does seem to be heavily leaning that way, don't you think? Now this also has a further implication as the RTX does rely on the tensor cores that of course are a big feature of the Volta GPU and the tensor cores do look like they're going to be remaining within the gaming Volta. Now obviously tensor cores were originally used in the current Volta for AI and other bits so it would be a bit odd for these to be in place in the gaming version of Volta because you know it's pretty clear that it's going to be a stripped down much less expensive version. Now, obviously the consumer version is going to have a bunch of cutbacks, you know, rumour has it it's going to use GDDR6 in, instead of HBM2, that sort of thing. So it does seem that we're going to be having the tensor cores probably in place next to CUDA cores to basically make room for not only this technology, but of course, future advancements that we'll probably learn more about in the future. Now, alongside this, and kind of adding more strength to the argument that this is an inadvertent confirmation that in GeForce Volta is a thing, is the fact that NVIDIA announced the NVIDIA Gameworks SDK is going to add a ray tracing denoiser module, and is basically going to add budget tools and resources for developers to make use of these, and increase realism and shorten the amount of workload included in that but and also obviously making use of Microsoft DXR and of course RTX so Gameworks, Games, Volta, GeForce you can kind of get my logic here it's not really all that complicated <laughs> So, as I keep saying, NVIDIA are pushing Volta pretty hard in this announcement, and the fact that they're doing that pretty much, in my mind, confirms gaming GeForce. Obviously, it doesn't actually confirm it, but it does confirm that we're going to be getting Volta or a architecture based upon Volta. It might not be called Volta, it might be called Ampere or Ampere, um, like we've heard rumoured, but it's probably going to be based upon Volta, based upon what I've already discussed. Uh, at the moment, of course, the Titan V is the only somewhat con consumer-focused card currently in the lineup, and it still costs three thousand dollars. So it's obviously going to be drastically cut down compared to what's on the market, but you kind of expected that anyway. So definitely interesting times. This is a really, really cool technology. Obviously, some very impressive demos put out. Obviously, I want to see what is actually going to be happening in games in reality, but I. Do like that this has finally been released after a long, long period of them working on it, and the results are definitely impressive. Obviously, some games have had really, really good lighting, but just this extra bit of lighting really increases that level of realism, and just I think will push games that next step forward to true photo realism, which is definitely something they've been trying to do for quite some time. Now before I close out this section and of course the video, I do have one last thing which is rather interesting as Hexus.net actually asked AMD about its own work with Microsoft DirectX Ray Tracing API. 
and they said that it was, quote, closely collaborating with Microsoft on the future of the API, and it's quote, hoping to, quote, define, refine, and support the future of DirectX 12 and ray tracing. So they didn't outright confirm that they're doing something with this, but they definitely hedged up towards it. So the race is definitely on when it comes to ray tracing, and of course, we're going to have to wait and see how or if this is actually applied in real games. But I'm definitely interested. So let me know your thoughts. As always, guys, your support is appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe. It really does make a huge difference. And I'll see you next time.